Hello again, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us for this uh, Friday's edition of Alaska Weather. On this 23rd day of October 2020, I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show once again. Up uh, first, hazardous weather graphic. Uh, change coming in, kind of the uh, mini cold spell we've had coming to an end. And as a result in the transition, we've got some advisories out uh, for the uh, Eastern Alaska range area, especially through the passes. That's a wind advisory west of the toe cutoff, and that kicks into effect uh, 6 p.m. this evening until, let's see, 4 a.m. Sunday, so through tonight, uh, Saturday, Saturday night, and into early Sunday morning. And looking for winds of, uh, let's see, 30 to 40 miles an hour sustained with gusts to 60 miles an hour during that time frame. And then out to the west there, uh, Galena and the mid and lower Yukon River Valley area uh, in toward uh, Grayling and those locations. That's a winter weather advisory that's out uh, actually until 6 p.m. Saturday. It's currently out now, it will be out until 6 p.m. Saturday. And some areas could see up to four to seven inches of snow during that time period by tomorrow afternoon or by tomorrow evening. And uh, other areas will see much less than that, but those are probably the top amounts that will fall with the system coming in off the Bering Sea. Moving on to uh, there, no other watches, warnings, or advisories out anywhere the state, uh, on up to the Arctic coast, Bering Sea. Uh, low pressure tracking eastward, but it's not really strong enough to uh, result in any uh, winter weather watches or advisories or warnings out there. Same thing for southern Alaska and the Panhandle. On the satellite, you can see the large area low pressure there southwest of the Pribilof Islands and north-northeast of Atka Island. And a uh, band of moisture associated with the uh, main frontal boundary, the occluded front, which actually tracks into the Gulf, western Gulf of Alaska and kind of a weak warm front and then cold front extending down from that uh, roughly east of Kodiak Island. And Kodiak kind of on the back side now, getting into some drier air there with uh, a little bit lighter precipitation. Otherwise, uh, clouds on the increase again across, especially mid and high level clouds up into the interior and south central Alaska, back to the northwest there with uh, some areas of uh, light snow over the inland areas. And uh, right down to the coast, uh, warming temperatures will be kind of a mix there for the North Gulf Coast, Southern Kenai Peninsula areas and increasing clouds are across the southeast coast as well, mostly on the north coast over the northern panhandle, but generally uh, dry conditions, just uh, mid and high level clouds spreading into the Fairbanks area and dry for the upper Yukon Valley on out to the Arctic coast and areas of rain and showers and gusty winds with the main low center there out over the Bering Sea, but improving back toward uh, Shimia there, just some isolated showers and uh, some partial clearing as well. And rolling that through again, uh, you can see kind of a break, a little bit of a break there, St. Lawrence Island between the uh, main frontal boundary there that just seems to have lifted northward of the area. And then some heavier clouds just to your south, kind of coming onto the eastern side or southeastern part of the island. And the southwest coast, uh, not too bad, kind of a partly to mostly cloudy day there, or mostly cloudy with uh, some areas of light precipitation. Again, the heavier stuff with that main band from the Pribilofs eastward down, extending in toward the Alaska Peninsula area. On the chart, uh, there's that frontal boundary there, roughly uh, across the southwest interior with areas of uh, light snow and snow showers, uh, really kind of uh, lightening up as you get up toward the Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island area. Nothing too terribly heavy, uh, but there is, a, as I mentioned, the winter weather advisory tonight as that moisture lifts northward as the whole pattern shifting eastward, very weak low south of Kodiak Island and a weak warm front. Whole, in fact, the entire frontal complex there is pretty weak, but tightening the gradient up a little bit with that 1047 millibar high over the Northwest Territories. So at least small crowd advisory level winds for the Barren Islands, maybe Kamishak Bay, possible narrow band of gale force winds in advance of the occluded front there. And looking at the uh, wind starting to pick up, uh, especially the Turnigan Arm there with a the gradient uh, from 
Prince William Sound there to the uh, Cuscombe Valley. So starting to see an increase in the uh, east and southeast winds. Of course, that means warmer temperatures. It will accompany the cloud cover, but uh, fair and dry over the interior areas. And uh, still cool, same for the panhandle, those northerly winds, outflow winds starting to trend downward now, but uh, haven't ended yet, but uh, kind of in a downward trend. Out to the west, quite an area of uh, showers, rain, and maybe some drizzle and fog there around that low center, and gusty winds anywhere from 25 to 30 miles an hour. Some areas seeing gusts upwards of 50 miles an hour with some gale force winds, tightening gradient over the northern Bering Sea as well, getting breezy over the southwest part of the state there with the areas of snow. And for tonight, again, uh, areas of snow uh, in the uh, western southwest interior, some of that will spread up into Kotzebue Sound and all along the northwest coast, cutting off just south of Cape Lisbon. Otherwise, uh, another center, Arctic High, kind of holds there over the central interior for light winds and another night of uh, chilly temperatures, especially over the eastern interior areas. But those winds starting to increase over the eastern Alaska range with uh, a little bit of an increase in the gradient. And that high holds, but beginning to weaken, again, the upper level ridge shifting eastward, and that's gonna allow the moisture to continue to increase here over south central Alaska. And uh, Areas from, uh, say, Anchor Point up to Palmer will probably be precipitation free, including Anchorage there on the lee side of the mountains and Chugach Mountains. And best chance of precipitation, southern Kenai Peninsula, southern Cook Inlet over to uh, Kamishak Bay, Iliamna, and just uh, light snowfall amounts possible there, portions of the western Susitna Valley and maybe the Talkeetnas. Otherwise, stays fair over the panel. Winds continuing to diminish there and, it's, well, northern interior dry. And it's really not much change there over the Bering Sea, that low center slowly moving eastward, high pressure taking over the area out toward the western Aleutians, western Bering, you can see ridging right up into the Russian Far East. And for tomorrow, the low weekends and continues to drift eastward slowly, but in, uh, you can see the gradient with a much uh, less than it, than it has been. And then that very weak low center almost didn't draw it in, 1,020 millibars, but yeah, there is one there, and or there will be one there. And so look for uh, possible moderate light rain, possibly moderate at times for the uh, Kenai Peninsula North Gulf Coast. And then ele any elevation will all be in the mixed precipitation, rain or snow. And then whatever gets inland is going to be pretty darn light up toward the Alaska Range. Uh, really not much of a precipitation producer for the southeast interior. And uh, dry for Cook Inlet, Manuska Susitna Valley. Uh, Cloudy, generally mostly cloudy, partly mostly sunny again tomorrow for the southeast coast, VFR through the passes, and increasing clouds again, uh, spilling into the upper Tanah Valley, but staying dry with some clearing all the way up to the eastern north slope, dry for the Arctic coast, and one band of moisture pushes some light snow up to the northwest interior, but you can see pretty solid there with the advisory levels out. And again, looking for up to four to seven inches of snow by tomorrow evening there of the uh, Yukon River Valley area, lower and mid Yukon River Valley. Mixture of precipitation along the southwest coast, rain, light rain, showers, and less windy over the central and eastern Bering Sea. And again, high pressure dominating the western areas out there. And then for Sunday, that ridge uh, progresses eastward a little bit there and kind of pinches, begins to pinch off a little bit. And that's uh, as a front enters the western Aleutians there with uh, small craft advisory level winds, say gusts to 30, 35 miles an hour, shimmy and at two with uh, rain, and generally fair for the uh, area from Kiska to Adak, Atka, chance of light rain, fog and drizzle, light northerly flow there, uh, nothing significant, and uh, really light winds over the eastern Bering Sea, Privilof's just cloudy, chance of showers, Fox Islands, and uh, most of the moisture now, we've got a pretty good warm front coming up. So look for gale force winds and rain on the increase. Uh, central south coast of the Panel could become heavy at times in those areas by the late, latter part of the afternoon with a, with a storm system in the south. So the one really washing out over the interior there, but still some areas of uh, light snow, as you can see, Copper River Basin, maybe Cook Inlet, Manus to sit in the valley, whatever falls will be quite light. Just a narrow band of snow showers there that trough farther to the north, dry for the north slope on out to the Arctic coast. And for the lows tonight, anywhere from, uh, say, 0 to 5 below, eastern interior, but uh, uh, markedly warmer as you head out to the west, lower 40s, Bristol Bay and along the southwest coast, upper 20s, northwest interior, and teens, eastern Arctic coast, with lows in the 20s for the Panhandle, lower 30s, upper 20s, lower 30s, south central Alaska, upper 40s along the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, mild southerly flow, lower 50s, 50 to 55, Alaska Peninsula, maybe Kodiak Island, and uh, 35 to 
5 for South Central Alaska, warmest on the Kenai Peninsula and North Gulf Coast areas. Upper 30s north for the Panhandle, southern areas there mid 40s and in the 20s, mid to upper for the uh, Tanana Valley, coldest area uh, upper Yukon Valley to Arctic Village, Eastern Brooks Range in the teens, but uh, the Central Arctic, Western Arctic Coast 30 to 35, upper 40s for the Southwest Coast, mid 40s for the Aleutians. Followed by lows, milder, everybody above zero, and then highs for the afternoon, near 50 in the southwest interior. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And first flying weather graphics are for, uh, actually, Saturday morning, back it up when IFR along the Arctic coast and uh, marginal VFR, part of the north slope, Brooks Range basically VFR, as well as central eastern interior, marginal VFR in the increase though over the western part of the state with IFR up to the southwest coast and a good chunk of the Bering Sea then way out there to the west back into the VFR. Commodorskis, Shimian at 2, IFR, Adak Atka, Eastern Aleutians, south side of the Alaska Peninsula, Kodiak Island, Shelikov Strait, Fognak Island, all IFR. Marginal VFR sliding up across the Kenai Peninsula and Cook Inlet slipping on up into western Prince William Sound, which uh, by afternoon see some IFR into the southwestern sound across Montague Island, south uh, coast of the Kenai Peninsula, and all of Prince William Sound marginal into possibly uh, uh, eastern Turnigan Arm, so Portage, maybe Girdwood right on the edge there, but northern Cook Inlet, VFR, Manuska Valley, Copper River Basin, and as you can see the eastern all the east side VFR as well as the Panhandle, high pressure holding there as it slowly shifts eastward, allowing the IFR to come inland farther there into the Koyukuk Valley and all the Yukon Cusquam Delta, Bristol Bay Marginal, Eastern Central Bering Sea IFR from the Fox Islands to St. Lawrence Island into a portion of the Seward Peninsula, Western Central Arctic Coast IFR with uh, Eastern Beaufort Sea Coast, not too bad, especially toward uh, Kaktovik and Barter Island, just uh, marginal VFR hugging the coastline. And for Sunday morning, IFR though uh, spreads eastward covering uh, much of the North Slope and the uh, Arctic coast as well from about Point Lay eastward. And then marginal VFR and then another big batch of IFR there, Kobuk Valley, Southern Kobuk Valley there back to the Southwest uh, across the Stebbins and the Southern Seward Peninsula, Yukon Cusquam Delta into the Cusquam Valley right up to the Alaska Range. Some of that's spilling over as you can see. Um, into this western Susitna Valley, western Cook Inlet, and then some marginal VFR, and then back into the IFR, south side of the Kenai Peninsula, all of Prince William Sound, north Gulf Coast. And even the Panhandle now starting to uh, see some marginal VFR showing up along the north coast, but holding VFR through the night, and then better conditions farther out to the west. Sunday afternoon, narrow band of IFR, central eastern Beaufort Sea coast, and up over the Yukon Flats along the uh, Yukon River there to maybe the southern Koyukuk Valley, and then all of the southwest interior there, as you can see from uh, southern Norton Sound right across the Cusquam Valley, and then just west of Tanana, Bristol Bay, all IFR, Kodiak Island right in the thick of the IFR and southern Cook Inlet, and a little farther covering more of the Kenai Peninsula, uh, for Sunday afternoon there, Prince William Sound, North Gulf Coast, and Copper River Basin looks pretty IFR, as well as most of the Panhandle, then marginal for the central Bering Sea and much of the Aleutians, and another zone of IFR creeping into the far western Aleutian areas. Anatovic, marginal VFR, but Adigan, a little farther to the east, I think will stay VFR throughout the entire day, although you see an increase in the clouds, especially in the afternoon, thickening the lowering, but should stay VFR. Lake Clark and Merrill, marginal VFR, uh, looks like a good forecast at this point in time, as does rainy and windy VFR. But uh, in the afternoon, ceilings uh, visible or ceilings uh, coming lower, so the southern entrance has a chance of becoming uh, marginal in the afternoon. Isabel, though, holding VFR as well as Mentasta, Tanita, and Portage. Uh, best conditions early on, and the lowest conditions will be in the latter part of the afternoon, which could possibly be IFR, Chilkoot and White, another VFR day. Freezing levels, a uh, little bit of a warm pocket up there over the north slope with some upper level ridging, 2,000 feet there, and then got to go all the way down to the north Gulf Coast. Uh, Eastern Bering Sea, two to 4,000 feet, 6,000 feet around Kodiak. Icing, look for some uh, oh, small zones of considerable moderate rime icing coming into, uh, well, Montague Island there with uh, light to isolated moderate, or light to isolated moderate rime icing for the north Gulf Coast. And then uh, another batch out there over the western interior areas and for the jet stream. 
Strong southwest flow, 145 knots, aimed right at Kodiak Island, coming up over a flat ridge in the Gulf there. Westerly is 115, turn northwest at the max is there just east of the Panhandle. And at 9,000 feet, uh, upper level low, as the whole pattern shifts eastward, that upper low tracking in toward uh, the southwest coast and 3,000 foot winds, about 40 knots there southwest, north northwest at north northeast 35 knots to the west 60 knot winds there coming into the southern kenai peninsula and turbulence moderate chop pretty widespread over the southwest uh, part of the state kodiak island aleutians alaska peninsula southern panhand why is plastic marine debris so common we know there's trash in the ocean Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills where trash can blow away. Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. Why is plastic marine debris so common? We know there's trash in the ocean. Unfortunately, a lot of it is plastic. We find plastic everywhere, from the ocean floor to surface. The plastics are all shapes and sizes and all different types. We find plastics on beaches and also inside animals' stomachs or wrapped around their bodies. That's bad news for our ocean and the animals that live in it and near it. It's also bad news for us. A recent study from the University of Georgia estimated that 8 million metric tons of plastic trash enters the ocean every year. That's like putting five bags filled with plastic on every foot of coastline in the world. That's a lot of plastic in the ocean, and it's there because, well, we put it there. The five most common items found during the International Coastal Cleanup are plastic cigarette butts, food wrappers, plastic beverage bottles, plastic bottle caps, and plastic straws and drink stirrers. Notice anything in common with those? It's a lot of single-use, disposable plastic. It goes without saying, we produce too much waste. That waste ends up in the ocean when we litter or don't recycle. Plastic is an important part of our modern lives. We use it for a lot of good things, but we need to take responsibility for how much we use every day and where it goes when we're done with it. The three R's can help, and it's up to every single one of us to practice them. Reduce your use of disposable plastic. That's anything you use once and throw away. Just use less. Reuse disposable plastics when possible. A plastic bottle makes a great coin piggy bank or watering can. The possibilities are endless. Recycle anything that can be recycled so it stays out of landfills where trash can blow away. 
Ocean plastic is a huge problem that's only going to get worse. Unless we change our ways, we can do better for the ocean and for us. the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Well, first, let's talk about what it's not. It's not a floating island of trash, like a garbage dump or a landfill. It's also not the only patch. They exist all throughout the ocean, and the Pacific Garbage Patch just happens to be the most famous. Garbage patches are large areas of marine debris concentration that are formed by rotating ocean currents called gyres, kind of like big whirlpools that suck things in. A garbage patch is made up of tiny plastic pieces called microplastics that are less than five millimeters long. It's more like pepper flakes swirling in a soup than something you can skim off the surface. You might come across some larger items like plastic bottles, but it's possible to sail through a garbage patch and not see anything. And they're a big problem for the ocean and us. People often ask why we can't just scoop up all the marine debris in the ocean. And the answer is, unfortunately, it's just not that simple. The first challenge is the sheer size of these garbage patches. They're huge. They're constantly moving with ocean currents. And there's debris from the ocean surface all the way down to the sea floor. Not to mention all the marine life we would disrupt if we tried to just scoop up debris. So what can we do? Well, the ultimate solution is prevention and we need to keep that as our highest priority. We can reduce, reuse, and recycle to keep trash out of the ocean in the first place. And we can participate in things like shoreline cleanups. It's a lot easier to deal with debris before it gets to the ocean. Because until we stop marine debris at the source, we'll just be cleaning it up forever. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Uh, looking at the coastal water forecast there for the panel. Not too bad on the inside water. Southeast, 10 to 15 knots, east 2 to 3 feet. And for the south coast, uh, looking at east-southeast winds, 15 knots with 6-foot seas on the north coast. Southeast, 20, seas 6 feet. And the outlook for Sunday, uh, that next system pushing in the head of the warm front, uh, gale force winds. We'll call it 30 knots there in the south coast out of the southeast with 11 foot seas and then picking up the 35 knots in the central coast, north coast, east southeast sustained 40 knots, seas 13 feet. Real light wind day there for the northern inside waters is calling it uh, variable to south at five knots. And Stevens Passage, southeast 15, Clarence Strait, southerlies on the increase to 20 knots and seas four feet. Prince William Sound tomorrow, small craft advisories. East winds 25 knots, six foot seas for Cook Inlet. Northeast 30, small craft advisories, nine to 10 foot seas. And sustained east winds 45 knots, just under storm force there for Kamishak Bay. And uh, seas 16 feet. Barren Island, southeast 40, and minimum gales there for the western North Gulf Coast. Out of the east at 35 knots, and the eastern North Gulf Coast, southeast at 30 knots, seas 11 feet. And then east 35 knots there for the eastern North Gulf Coast on Sunday, but Prince William Sound, northeast, down to 20 knots, sea three, seas three feet. And for the western North Gulf Coast, Barren Islands, Kamishak Bay, all northeast at 25. Southern Cook Inlet, small craft advisories, north winds 25 knots, and north of the Forelands, north at 20. And Kodiak Island, east side, southwest 15, Shillikoff Strait, uh, south 20. And then 20 knot winds on down to uh, Castle Cape, Castle Cape to Cape Sarachev. In fact, the entire Alaska Peninsula is south 25 knots. Small craft advisory is also in store for Bristol Bay out of the southeast at 25 knots. And then on uh, Sunday, the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula, pretty light winds northeast at 10, seas four feet. And the uh, Bering or Pacific side, winds will be out of the north at 15 knots. Bristol Bay, southeast 15. Kodiak Island, northeast winds 20 knots, seas six to seven feet. Fox Islands tomorrow, uh, call it small craft advisories for west-southwest winds, uh, 20 to 30 knots, seas 7 to 11 feet, and northwest, 20 to 25 knots, 8 Akhenatka with 9 to 13 foot seas, small craft advisories there from Amchitka Island all the way out to Shimia for northwest winds at 25 knots. And then 30 knot winds out of the southeast, uh, mainly Shimia and Attu area Sunday afternoon with the next front pressing eastward, 
Otherwise, uh, Kiskam Chitka, East 15, Adak and Atka, light northwest winds at 15, 5 to 8 foot seas. West Northwest 15, Unmac Island, and West 10 to 15 for Alaska Island with seas running 5 to 8 feet. And for the Southwest Coast, uh, kind of a difference there. South of Nunavak Island, small craft advisory, subtle east 25 knots, seas 7 feet. North, uh, northwest 15 for the Pribloffs, Northeast 20, St. Matthew Island, east 20 knots, Yukon Delta Coast, back to northeast at 20 for St. Lawrence Island. And then for Sunday, St. Lawrence Island, no change. Northeast winds, 20 knots. Only 10 knots, though, for Norton Sound. Northeast, 15, Yukon Delta Coast. Cuscombe Delta Coast, southeast of 15. Northwest, 15 for the Pribilofs. And St. Matthew Island, northeast, 20 knots, sea, 7 feet. Eastern Wolverine Sea Coast, uh, east or east-southeast. Not too bad, though, 15 knots. Seas maybe 1 feet in the ice-free areas. East at 10 for the central coast. North, 10 on the west side. And east, 15 for the Chukchi Sea. Outlook for uh, Sunday. Again, for the uh, central coast, pretty light wind. Central Arctic coast there, east at 10, seas at about 3 feet or less. And then the east side, north to northwest at 15 knots, seas 2 feet in the ice-free areas. And the western Arctic coast, all the way down to Cape Thompson, east winds, 15 knots and seas 3 feet. And then not much difference from Cape Thompson to Wales, northeast winds at 15 with 3-foot seas. And for tonight, Stays dry up over the North Slope Arctic Coast. Actually, central eastern interior all the way down to the eastern North Gulf Coast. And Prince William Sound, generally a dry night coming up, although increasing chances of moisture there over the Kenai Peninsula. Western Prince William Sound, as well as the upslope areas of the Western Alaska Range, maybe the Talkeetnas, but dry and less wind for the Panhandle. And uh, very unsettled with that low out over the Bering Sea. And then the snow advisory kicks into effect for the lower and mid Yukon River Valley areas until tomorrow afternoon, looking for totals possibly in some areas as high as four to seven inches. And the wind advisory out for the uh, eastern Alaska range with increasing gradient there west of the toe cutoff, uh, gusts maybe up to 60 miles an hour. And that's out through uh, Sunday. Otherwise, uh, one band of moisture will bring some light snow up to the northwest interior for tomorrow. And then for uh, the Aleutians, that weakening low, less in the way of wind and precipitation, but still pretty cloudy. Higher pressure out west shifts a little to the east ahead of the next front over the far western Aleutians. And then a, a stormier pattern for the Gulf of Alaska and the Panhandle. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbormaster before you go boating.